let's do some practice exercises let's figure out the nature of series now let's say un is equal to 1 by 1 times 2 plus 1 by 2 times 3 plus 1 by 3 times 4 plus and so on now here nth term is not given so first we have to figure out the nth term now top remains 1 so it remains 1 now here the first term in the denominator always goes as per n and the second term in the denominator always is one more than n so n plus one now here the highest uh, sorry highest degree of n is n square so let vn equal to one by n square now un by vn is equal to 1 by n times n plus 1 divided by 1 by n square so 1 by n times n plus 1 multiplied by n square this gets cancelled so n by n plus 1 this can be again written as n by let's take out n 1 plus 1 by n so this n also gets cancelled so we are left with 1 plus 1 by n now let's take the limit limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn is equal to limit as n approaches infinity of 1 by 1 plus 1 by n is equal to 1 by 1 plus 0 which is equal to 1 now this is not equal to 0 so that means both un and vn are both similar that means if one is convergent the other is convergent if one is divergent the other is divergent now we know v n equal to 1 by n square is convergent why because if you notice p is greater than 1 so which implies un is also convergent okay let's look at the second one 1 by 4 plus 2 by 6 plus 3 by 8 plus and so on again we need to figure out the nth term so let's say this is un so un is going to be equal to square root of now here if you notice numerator goes as per n 2 times 2 1 by no 2 by 2 by 2 times 3 plus 3 by 2 times 4 and so on which means uh, okay now we can figure out the nth term so n by 2 remains as it is and this is 1 more than n so n plus 1 so this is the nth term now the degree of numerator and denominator is same so let's take vn equal to 1 so limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn is equal to limit as n approaches infinity of n by 2 times let's take out n so we are left with 1 plus 1 by n divided by 1 limit as n approaches no we can actually take the limit now so when we take the limit these two actually have got cancelled so we are left with 1 by 2 times 1 plus 0 divided by 1 we can ignore so this becomes 1 by 
to square root. Now we know that Vn diverges. So therefore Un also diverges because this is not equal to 0 because of which Vn and Un both behave in the same manner. Okay, let's look at the next one. Un is equal to 2n minus 1 by n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. Okay, so here let's take uh, the highest. So, numerator it is n, denominator it is going to be n cube. So, 1 by n square. Now, remember here the series expansion is not given. If you want, you can just put 1, 2, 3 for n and figure out. But we know Vn is going to be 1 by n square. And this we know is convergent. Why? Because its p value is greater than 1. Okay. So now let's simplify un by vn. So 2n minus 1 uh, divided by n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 divided by 1 by n square. Now n square if you multiply it will take the reciprocal so n square will come up and 2n minus 1 by uh, n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. Now let's take out n from within the bracket. So this becomes n cube 2 minus 1 by n by n cube 1 plus 1 by n 1 plus 2 by n. So n cube n cube gets cancelled and now let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn is going to be equal to 2 minus 1 by 0 uh, 1 by infinity so 2 minus 0 by 1 plus 0 2 1 plus 0 which is equal to 2 by 1 which is 2 which is again not equal to 0 that means u n and v n both are similar so therefore u n is also convergent let's look at the fourth one 1 by root n plus root 2 plus 1 by root root 2 plus root 3 plus 1 by root 3 plus root 4. Now here the nth term would be what? un is equal to 1 remains same. 1, 2, 3 first term always goes as per n. So root n. The next uh, second term always goes 1 more than n. So square root of n plus 1. Now here denominator we have root n numerator nothing so let's take v n is equal to 1 by root n now this is going to be divergent because p is less than 1 remember n square root of n can be written as n to the power of 1 by 2 which is less than 1 now u n by v n is equal to 1 by root n plus root n plus 1 divided by 1 by root n multiply it by its reciprocal n plus 1. Now what are we going to do? Let's take out root n from the denominator. So root n square root of n 1 plus square root of 1 plus 1 by n. So root n root n gets cancelled. We are left with 1 by 1 plus square root of 1 plus 1 by 1. Now let's take the limit. Limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn 
is equal to 1 by 1 plus square root of 1 plus 0 which is 1 by 1 plus square root of 1 is 1 which is 1 by 2 which is again not equal to 0. So here we have seen un is uh, sorry vn is divergent so which means un is also divergent. Okay, let's look at another problem as n goes from 1 to infinity of square root of n square plus 1 minus square root of n square minus 1. Now first let's take this as uh, the nth term of this so which is going to be it is given in that form itself let's uh, rationalize it because ideally uh, in these situations try to avoid n's in the numerator so let's rationalize it so n square plus 1 minus square root of n square minus 1 times square root of n square plus 1 plus square root of n square minus 1 divided by square root of n square plus 1 plus square root of n square minus 1. Now this would be equal to n square plus 1 minus n square minus 1 square root of n square plus 1 plus square root of n square minus 1. Now let's open up the brackets. So n square plus 1 minus n square minus plus 1. This and this gets cancelled. And in the denominator n square plus 1 plus square root of n square minus 1. Okay, that is what we still are in un itself. Now let's try to figure out vn. Uh, a highest degree in the numerator is not, not nothing is there. Uh, denominator we have n. Square root of n square would be n. So let's take vn is equal to 1 by n. We know that this is divergent. Why? Because p is 1. Now, let's take un by vn. So, this is 2 by square root of n square plus 1 plus square root of n square minus 1 divided by 1 by n. So, 2n by now let's take out n square. Square root of n square if we take, a, take out it will be n. And we do it with respect to both the roots. So this would become square root of 1 plus 1 by n square plus 1 minus 1 by n square. So n, n gets cancelled. And now let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn. So 2 by square root of 1 plus 0 plus square root of 1 minus 0 which is 2 by 1 plus 1 which is 2 by 2 which is 1 which is again not equal to 0. That means they are both similar and since vn is divergent un is also divergent cube root of n plus 1 minus cube root of n okay so un is cube root of n plus 1 minus cube root of n now this can be written as n plus 1 to the power of 1 by 3 minus n to the power of 1 by 3. Let's take n by 3 out. So 
So add to the power of 1 by 3 if we take it out what we will have is 1 plus 1 by n to the power of 1 by 3 minus 1. Now let's take the expansion of this using binomial theorem is equal to n to the power of 1 by 3 common 1 plus 1 by 3 times 1 by okay let me write it like this 1 by 3 by 1 factorial times 1 by n plus 1 by 3 1 by 3 minus 1 by 2 factorial times 1 by n square and so on by the way don't forget minus 1 minus 1 this one okay so 1 and minus 1 get cancelled so n to the power of 1 by 3 this is going to be 1 by 3 n minus now 1 by 3 minus 1 is minus 2 by 3 minus 2 by 3 times 1 by 3 is minus 2 by 9 so minus I have written 2 by 9 times 2 2 factorial so 2 2 gets cancelled denominator has n square as well and so on now n to the power of 1 by 3 1 by 3 n minus 1 by 9 n square and so on now let's take out n so n to the power of 1 by 3 and we take out 1 n so this becomes 1 by 3 minus 1 by 9 n plus and so on now 1 by 3 if we bring it down we get 1 minus 1 by 3 which is 2 by 3 1 by 3 minus 1 by 9 n plus and so on let's take now uh, vn is equal to 1 by n to the power of 2 by 3 now since p is less than 1 therefore it is divergent now let's look at un by vn so this would be uh, 1 uh, 1 by n to the power of 2 by 3 times 1 by 3 minus 1 by 9 n and so on divided by 1 by n to the power of 2 by 3 these two get cancelled which means this is equal to 1 by 3 minus 1 by 9 n and so on now if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of u n by v n limit as n approaches infinity of 1 by 3 minus 1 by 9 n now every term except the first one will always have a n in that so which means this will be 1 by 3 minus 0 so therefore 1 by 3 which is not equal to 0 that means u n and v n both are going to be similar so therefore u n is also divergent now let's look at the eighth one let's say we are given sigma u n is equal to 2 by 1 p plus 3 by 2 p plus 4 by 3 p plus 5 by 4 p and so on now nth term of this would be what uh, numerator is always greater than 1 uh, one more than n so n plus 1 and the denominator is n to the power of p now the numerator n if we take it uh, let's say n by n p 
this can be written as 1 by n to the power of p minus 1. So let's say Vn is equal to 1 by n to the power of p minus 1. Now uh, we don't know the nature of uh, this Vn as of now. But let's continue as if we know. Now let's figure out Un by Vn. This is going to be n plus 1 by n to the power of p divided by or let's directly multiply it by its reciprocal. So n to the power of p minus 1. So n plus 1, let's bring it down n to the power of p minus p minus 1. Yes, so this would become n plus 1 by n pp gets cancelled and we are left with 1 plus 1. So un by vn is equal to n plus 1 by n which can be written as 1 plus 1 by n. Now we can take the limit. So limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn is equal to limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 by n which is 1 plus 0 which is 1 which is not equal to 0. So both un and vn are similar. That means they behave in the same manner. Now limit of Vn. So we have to figure out the behavior of Vn so that we can say whether Un is convergent or not. So limit as n approaches infinity of Vn is equal to limit as n approaches infinity of 1 by n to the power of p minus 1. Now remember, uh, whether uh, Vn is convergent or divergent depends totally on p now. So if p minus 1, the exponent of the denominator is greater than 1, then it is going to be convergent. So which means we can simplify it to say p is greater than 2. Similarly, if p minus 1 is less than or equal to 1, then it will be divergent. So that means p is less than or equal to 2. So depending on whether p is greater than 2, in that case vn is convergent, which means un is also convergent. So we can write it un is convergent if p is greater than 2 is divergent if p is less than or equal to 2. Now let's look at 8th. This is going to be 8th. Previous one was 7th. By mistake I had written 8th. Now let's look at um, sin 1 by m un is sin 1 by n. Let's directly take vn equal to 1 by n. So which means by the way sigma of this and sigma of this and the nth term would be vn equal to 1 by n. And we know that this is divergent. Why? Because p is equal to 1. So limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn. So limit as n approaches infinity of sin 1 by n divided by 1 by n. Don't even think of multiplying it with its reciprocal because this gives us a very uh, straightforward way of solving it. Now the only problem here is this is 1 by n, this is 1 by n, but this is n. If this also becomes 1 by n, then we know the limit. So which means when n 
is greater than infinity we want to convert it to 1 by n so 1 by n would be 0 right so instead of saying n tends to infinity we can say 1 by n tends to 0 of sine 1 by n by 1 by n so we know the limit of sine 1 by n by 1 by n when 1 by n is tending to 0 actually we recognize it more in this form limit as theta tends to 0 of sine theta by theta so which is equal to 1 which is not equal to 0 so therefore they are both similar which means un is also divergent okay let's look at the next one 1 by square root of n times tan 1 by n now this is going to be n to the power of 1 by 2 and here we have n okay so let's add up the degree so what we'll end up with is 1 by n to the power of 1 by 2 plus 1 which will give us 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2 so let's say v n is equal to 1 by n to the power of 3 by 2 and this is going to be convergent why because p is greater than 1 i hope you are getting the idea how important that p series is okay so now let's look at un by vn un is no when we say un let's not write this sigma if we have to write sigma then this should also be sigma so in which case the nth term of un would be un is equal to 1 by root n times tan 1 by n okay now let's write un by vn 1 by root n times tan 1 by n multiplied by the reciprocal of the vn so which is n to the power of 3 by 2 so what do we have now this would be equal to let's bring it down so n to the power of 1 by 2 minus 3 by 2 tan 1 by n this would be equal to minus 2 by 2 minus 2 by 2 tan 1 by n which is equal to 1 by n to the power of minus 1 tan 1 by n which is equal to n tan 1 by n now this can be written as tan 1 by n by 1 by n now let's take the limit of n approaching infinity of tan 1 by n by 1 by n again same problem we don't want here we have 1 by n 1 by n here we require 1 by n tending to 0 so when n tends to infinity we know 1 by n tends to 0 so limit as 1 by n tends to 0 of tan 1 by n by 1 by n and this we know is equal to 1 which is not equal to 0 which means un is whatever vn is and vn we saw is convergent so un is also convergent let's look at the next one un is equal to sigma of square root of 1 plus 2 to the power of n by 1 plus 3 to the power of n now let's take vn as square root of 2 to the power of 2 by 3 to the power of n now again you should be able to recognize the patterns right 
this is going to be x to the power of n which means it is going to be a geometric series with the common ratio as square root of 2 by 3. Now this is less than 1. So therefore Vn is convergent. Okay. Now let us look at Un by Vn square root of 1 plus 2n by square root of 1 plus 3 to the power of n divided by basically means multiplication with the reciprocal so let us take the reciprocal uh, 3 to the power of n divided by square root of 2 to the power of n now here let us take out uh, 2 to the power of n so square root of 2 to the power of n if we take out 1 by let us take the square root of the entire thing 1 by 2 to the power of n plus 1 divided by again here we can take out 3 to the power of n 1 by 3 to the power of n plus 1 and here we have square root of 3 to the power of n and square root of 2 to the power of n. Now we can actually take out this 2 to the power of n outside, not outside the square root because it is multiplication we can treat it as separate as well which means that this will cancel out with this, this will cancel out with this. So what we are left with is uh, 1 by 2 to the power of n plus 1 by 1 by 3 to the power of n plus 1 which means now we can take the limit so limit as n approaches infinity of un by vn is equal to limit as n approaches infinity of 1 by 2 to the power of n plus 1 by by 3 to the power of n plus 1 which is going to be equal to 0 plus 1 by 0 plus 1 which is 1 which is not equal to 0. So because it is not equal to 0 u and n v n are alike. So therefore u n is whatever v n is and we have seen v n is convergent. So u n is also convergent. So that is some practice questions. You need to practice a lot more. That's enough for today. Bye for now.